The sermon for this evening is from uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 33. Uh, the sermon is entitled, Joyfully Lutheran, the Sixth Commandment. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? Uh, we should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do. And husband and wife, love and honor each other. Harrison writes, Of all things, sin has distorted and destroyed that none is more horribly on display in this world than sex and marriage. The order of God, so important. So obvious that it has become as we live in a world that is disordered, where God and his authority has been subverted, that is, put on the back burner as the fleshly desires of the human condition takes the lead. And to no surprise, as we live in a world today, that it has become the new norm. So much of a new norm that it has become that God's design of marriage is seen as archaic and irrelevant, doesn't it? Or so the world says. And thus we see it in the news and, and we see it on the newsstand, even in the grocery store line at the checkout counter, we see the target as the devil continues to attack. Now we hear those words in the book of Ephesians, right? The order of marriage, right there at the tail end of, I believe, 32 and 33. And that comes from Genesis 2, 18 to 25. That therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, order number one. And he hold fast to his wife, order number two. And number three, they shall become one flesh. Number one, number two, number three. The order of God, his word, his design, his command. And I think for, I know there are not too many youths here um, that are in college or that are in high school or young adults, but I know we have some really young kids here. But it's important for everyone to hear the design of God because his design is true. His design is right. His design is, is, is true. And I think when we talk about God's order, uh, it, we, we live in a world that is kind of against that order where one, two, and three becomes three, two, one, or two, one, three, or whatever you want to go, whatever order that is, it's a symptom of how this world is going, full of disorder. And we see it, right, ever since the beginning with the fall where that disorder began, everything was ordered. Adam and Eve had everything. They ordered everything. God gave them this order. They were both naked, not ashamed. Yet we know what happened after they ate from the tree. Their eyes opened. They saw their nakedness and they very well knew what happened. They had fallen short to the glory of God. And now they were covered as they were fleeing for cover. What they didn't realize at that very moment, or maybe they did, that now they were covered in disorder as sin was brought into the world. Here we see in the sixth commandment how it begins always with the first commandment to fear, love, and trust God above all things. And thus, as we go to this sixth commandment, how this disorder is seen in a world today. I think that's the bottom line. Are we rooted in God's word? Or are we rooted in our flesh? Because if we're rooted in our flesh, what happens? We reverse everything and we take it upon ourselves as we take the reins based on how we desire and feel. Now, even within marriage, when two people get together, yes, these two people are very sinful. They're not perfect, right? Even within marriage, rather than honoring and serving and loving our spouse, how many times we face strife and discord and conflict and resentment, this Cold War type 
atmosphere. And indeed, we might have our excuses. We might have the reasons why we feel the way we feel. We might feel justified on these feelings. But through it all, what is really happening is the sinful flesh failing to see the true gift that God has blessed in the union of marriage between man and woman. It's a beautiful gift, it is, right? A beautiful gift that God designed. And we see it today as we read the Apostles' Creed, Article 1. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, right? That's what we said. In other words, we're saying that God gives us all that we need, including our house, home, wife, and children, land, animals, and all that we have. And even as we pray the fourth commandment, give us this day our daily bread, we pray that God would lead us to realize that all things come from Him, including our food and drink, house and home, but also devout husband or wife. A beautiful gift marriage is from our Lord. Yet as soon as we face it in our flesh, as we live in our flesh, how easy we take our eyes off God and His Word and also His order. Sexual sins run rampant in this day and age, right? Adultery, so real. Lust, so frequent. Harrison says, the answer to all sexual sin, whether one is married or unmarried, is Jesus. Repent daily. Avoid opportunities for the flesh. Cling to Jesus in his word. Because daily we're fa faced with this sinful flesh. The temptations, the battle of this flesh. So easily do we desire in this flesh that God conforms to our way. Rather than us conforming to God and his word, submitting faithfully and humbly to his command. Uh, Harrison further writes, In the midst of sins against God and spouse, sins against family and children, how can a marriage survive? Only by regularly hearing God's word of law and gospel, only by the life-giving forgiveness of Christ, only by being forgiven and speaking forgiveness to my spouse. Stay away or staying away from church is at the peril of your marriage. See, in the midst of the disorder that we face, because we all face it, the key is the, the root of all things, whether it's a marriage or just life in general, right, is the Word of God. It's the root that is in God's Word. Far too many times are we fixated on trying, whether it's in life, but especially in marriage, to right the ship apart from the Word of God. Whether that may be behavioral changes that seem to be the cure-all for that relationship in your life, only if they did this or that, our marriage would be much better. And thus, marriages go down this path, trying to find their way. But all along, what plagues us as people, as people of the flesh, is our sin stuck in ourselves, stuck in our pride, where our service to one another, our love for one another becomes conditional rather than unconditional, that becomes without grace and with legalism, where our rationale, our ways, and our thoughts, well, those are the things which dictate our marriage. But as I always uh, look at my wife, I always prayerfully remind or prayerfully <laughs> pray to the Lord that God will always remind me who he has placed in my life. The one who he has provided, the one who shows me that this is my vocation to love and serve my spouse because a beautiful gift it is, this gift of marriage. So true, the blessed gift of marriage between man and woman is the order of God as we humbly submit and have faith in his word. And we see that in Ephesians 5. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. As to the Lord, it reads. 
continuing, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body as is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. I know when wives hear that, it kind of gives them the moment of shudder. Yes, wives are to submit. They are. But the question is, what are they submitting to, isn't it? What are they submitting to? Because for husbands, well, they got a lot there for them. Husbands, love your wives. And again, this is according to the word of God, according to his order, according to his truth. Husbands, love your wives. That is, wives are to submit as husbands are to love their wives. Well, how much are they to love their wives? As it says in scripture, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That is God's beautiful design. Wives submit, husbands sacrifice everything. Yes, husbands sacrifice everything as husbands lay their lives down for their bride. The greatest servants in the marriage is that husband who just as he loves his wife, loves them just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, it says in scripture. He who loves his wife loves himself. I think I know there are not too many husbands here, a couple out there, but did you hear that? He who loves his wives, that's how they love themselves. Again, how disordered we get as we love ourselves before we love our wives. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and two shall become one flesh. God's beautiful gift. Leaving the father and mother, getting married, holding fast, and then becoming one flesh union. Taking part in the gift of marriage, those sexual gifts, but also the unity that is rooted in that word of God. The beautiful design of God. And as you always see at church on Sunday, I always try to make it a point to commune husband and wife together. I do that to remind them of the forgiveness of sins, knowing that two people, sinners, we fall short, but yet we are rooted in the body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. That our bond is not of what we do, about, but, but what Christ has done for us. That is the perfect picture of marriage. The Christ who died for his bride, the church. Yes, husband and wife may try their hardest to make this marriage right. But the only one who makes it right is the Christ. His body and blood who delivers the truest of love, the sacrificial love. That even in our sin, our shame, our guilt, our trespasses, all of them, he shows us what this true marriage is all about. Laying his life down for the sheep, laying his life down for the bride, the church, covering all of you with his love, his body and blood. So that indeed you are presented sanctified holy and blameless, without splendor, and all majesty in front of our Lord, all by his work, the forgiveness of sins. And that is yours. The crucifixion upon the cross, there his redemption, resurrection, there he makes all things ordered once again. Yes, we all fall short. We all are disordered in our sin. But thanks be to God that we have our Christ, the one who puts the pieces back together. The perfect story of salvation, his death and resurrection, his ascension, where we know that in this total 
gift that he gives to us, all of our sorrows, our griefs, our pains, our transgressions, all of the resentment, the pains and the sufferings that we might face in our life have been covered, the multitudes of sins washed away. This is the perfect marriage that Christ gives to us and this is yours, my friends. Jesus, his forgiveness for you, the true picture of marriage, the bridegroom with his bride, the church, for you. And there you go. As Christ says, your sins are forgiven. What a joy that is. Your sins are forgiven. Wiped clean. Keys are yours all the way to eternal life because of the ordered, perfect, graceful, and sacrificial marriage that God gives through His Son. Now we will conclude with these words uh, from our book. I rejoice that God has given the gift of marriage and the gift of the chaste and decent life to those married or unmarried, even though I fall and sin. I know that Jesus has kept this commandment for me. And in repentance and faith, God sees me only as his perfect and chaste child. Indeed, God does. That is how he sees you. Because the blood of the Lamb says so. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Midweek Sermon from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.